Hello and welcome to this video tutorial which is a continuation in our series on the BGP best path selection algorithm and in this video tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the fifth criteria that gets evaluated when BGP runs through the best path selection algorithm after it looks at the weight, the local preference, local origination, and the AS path. If those are all equal then BGP arrives at step five where it's going to prefer the path with the lowest origin type. And here's where we're going to take a look at the origin code. Again, this is a BGP well-known mandatory attribute. So in other words, it's recognized by all implementations of BGP, whether you're running HP's version of BGP or Juniper's version of BGP or Arista's version of BGP. The origin code must be... Um, uh, incorporated into your release of BGP and it's a mandatory attribute which means if it's not in the BGP update message the message that contains the network layer reachability information the origin code has to be there and in fact let's take a look here at a packet capture uh, again this is sort of a staged packet capture that's already been accomplished but we take a look at BGP path attributes and in the path attribute section, you can see we've got our three mandatory path attributes, the origin code, the AS path, and the next hop. Those are three BGP mandatory well-known attributes that have to be uh, in every update message. You can see here we're looking at an update message. So let's look at the origin code. You can see we've got the flags for the well-known, transitive, and complete. The type is the origin code, which is uh, a bit value of one. The length is a byte. And here we go. What is the origin for this NLRI's update? Again, this is uh, an update uh, that was pushing out the network reachability uh, information for the following networks. And you can see the origin code was incomplete and it has a value of two. Uh, and the three values that you can have are IGP. EGP, now EGP not in the sense of it's an exterior gateway protocol like BGP, but EGP in the sense of the legacy exterior gateway protocol, uh, which was defined quite some time ago uh, and is uh, definitely um, a legacy technology that you should not see. Uh, and again, you should not see the origin code of one, which would represent the exterior gateway protocol, which is EGP. Uh, it has been completely replaced uh, due to its limitations by BGP. And then we finally have incomplete. And so written another way, if we take a look at our drawing and the topology that we're going to be using here, IGP is better than EGP is better than incomplete. Uh, so in other words, and I've got the values here that you're going to see if you did a packet capture with Wireshark, is IGP as a value of zero, so lower is better, EGP a value of one, and incomplete a value of two. Uh, or in other words, using the origin codes is the lowercase i is less than the lowercase e is less than the question mark, which stands for incomplete. And so those are the three values that you'll find in the origin code field that again is a well-known mandatory field and so to kind of wrap things up here with the values EGP the value of one you should never see that in fact um, I'm actually going to be at Cisco live here next week uh, and that is definitely on my list of questions to try to get an answer to uh, and that is why does that still show up in the documentation and why uh, do we have a, a field for it? You'll see when we look at the command line, the CLI, uh, that the Cisco implementation, when you do the show IP BGP and you're taking a look at the different values, you've got the status codes and the next hop and the uh, AS path and you've got this origin code field uh, and they still have a, uh, a listing for EGP. Uh, again, a routing protocol that is definitely not in use anymore, or not at least anywhere that I know of, uh, and certainly not supported. You can't even execute 
uh, the router EGP command on uh, recent Cisco IOSs. It's just not there. So let's take a look at how origin type plays a role in selection of the routes. And so what I'm going to do is from AS900 and AS400, I'm going to originate uh, the same prefix. On AS900, we're going to use the network command. And that's going to be an IGP uh, advertisement. Because again, remember, in order to use the network command, the prefix or the route actually needs to be uh, in the IGP, right? Whereas incomplete means it's been redistributed uh, from some other routing source. Uh, and again, if you think about it, it makes sense that the IGP is more trusted than incomplete because incomplete means it's been redistributed. I've got, I don't have any uh, sort of record keeping on where that prefix may have originated from. Uh, whereas with IGP, I do. Uh, that there's going to be a network statement somewhere uh, that has originated that information. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, on router 9 and AS900 here. Let's pull this back up. There we go. So let's jump over here to router 9 and we'll simply uh, originate, uh, let's say, show IP interface brief. I'm wondering if 99 is out there yet. It's not. So let's go ahead and go into global config. We're going to say interface loopback 99. We'll say IP address 99, 99, 99, 99 with a subnet mask of all 255, so slash 32. And let's get the address option in there as well. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to say router BGP 900 address family IPv4 unicast. And I'm going to originate this with a network statement. We're going to validate things from router 3's perspective. So on router 3, if I were to say show IP BGP, and let's take a look at what we have so far. You can see there's no 99.99.99 network. Uh, and so that's a good thing right now. Uh, and again, over here, you can see where we talk about the metric or the med, and that's going to actually be next up in the video series, uh, step six, local preference, which is the second uh, criteria, weight, which is the first criteria. You see weight is zero. Right? And then we have the AS path, and then you'll notice out here at the end, and it almost gives it the appearance that it's part of the AS path. I've always wondered uh, why Cisco doesn't put a header that says origin, right? Because what you're seeing here at the end, these are the origin codes. And these are really the only two origin codes or origin types that you should see is the lowercase i which is going to be originated with a network statement. In other words, locally originated here, or uh, when it's learned from another router, it knows it was locally originated, like here, where it was originated in AS900, and actually, yeah, originated in AS900, but it was originated with a network statement, as opposed to the question mark, and the question mark simply means incomplete which means we don't have the information required to be able to trace this back to its origin. Whereas with the I, we do. And so those are the only two codes you should see here listed at the end. You should not see the lowercase e, which would mean that BGP learned the information from the exterior gateway protocol, EGP. Right, and hopefully that makes sense. That uh, in the sense of you know EGP, I'm not talking about EGP, the acronym representing exterior gateway protocols that you may run into. Rather, I'm talking about the actual original EGP, exterior gateway routing protocol, defined in RFC 904. So very early on, and again, this has been completely replaced by BGP. So again, to recap, the only two origin codes you should see are the question mark and the I. It's either incomplete with a question mark or it is IGP, generated with a network statement. So let's go ahead and clear up here. 
and we're on router 9 we're going to use the network statement and actually uh, since the, we're saying that if it's learned via the IGP with an origin code value of 0 that that is preferred so let's actually go to router 4 first and we're going to go ahead and say, we'll go to global config interface loopback 99. So we're going to first originate it with the redistribute statement. So it's going to come into router 3 as incomplete. And then we're going to see that that gets superseded or replaced by the origination with the network statement on router 9. So IP address 99, 99, 99, 99. And again, there's nothing that's preventing uh, two different service providers from uh, originating uh, in LRI that is the same and so then it would depend on how they originated that so we've got the loopback address there now let's get into router BGP 400 and address family IPv4 unicast uh, where we're simply going to say redistribute connected and so this is going to redistribute a whole bunch of stuff but 99.99.99.99 is going to be part of that redistribution. So let's come up here to, uh, in fact, we'll come over here to router 3 and we'll say show IP BGP. And let's see, we'll trim it down here to include just the IP address, all 99s. And there it is. And so let me move it up here a little more central on the screen. And if we take a look, Again, that origin code field all the way at the end is indicating what? Exactly, it's indicating incomplete. Right, it's indicating incomplete because of the question mark. And it learned it from Autonomous System 400. But that question mark in the incomplete means, or indicates that while it originated in AS400, it's incomplete. I'm not really sure how to recurse, right, or what the original source was of that in LRI, of that route. It could have been from anywhere. Uh, and F AS400 simply is um, re advertising it with a redistribute statement. So we're not really sure. Did that in LRI originate in AS400, or did 400 learn it from somewhere else, maybe an IGP? some other form of redistribution and then redistribute it out again. So now let's see what happens. Let's test and confirm if in fact the network statement is more preferred with a mask of all 255s. So is the network statement preferred over the redistribute statement? Meaning is it more trustworthy? So show IPP, BGP, include, and that was actually pretty quick. I thought we might have to uh, clear the BGP process in the outbound direction. But as quickly as I ran the command, it had already updated. And here you can see that it's the I, right? Meaning it was an IGP originated with the network statement. So let's say show IP, BGP, and you have a list of your origin codes right here. Right, And this is uh, what I was talking about earlier is, I'm not sure, this is 15.3 code. In fact, I've looked at this on 15.6t, which is really like the most latest uh, or the latest code release that's out. And it still shows the origin code for EGP. And so I'm curious as to why that's in there uh, given the fact that EGP as a routing protocol is literally non-existent and not even supported on the Cisco IOS. The only reason, the only thing I can think of is backwards compatibility, but it would be a very, very corner use case where someone would be running EGP instead of BGP. Uh, but again, the code's there, and uh, next week at Cisco Live, I'm going to ask around to see if I can't get uh, a, a viable answer as to why that is still in there. And maybe it's just, uh, again, a legacy, a legacy thing left in there. So here is the BGP local rib, right? Or the loc rib. And here's where we see the two prefixes that we've received or the two routes we've received to the prefix 99, 99, 99, 99. And 
which one got selected? So let's walk through the criteria. Well, first off is weight. You can see the weight is the same. So we move to the second criteria, local preference. Local preference is the same, it's 100. When it's not shown, it's 100 is the default. And then we've got the third criteria, which is locally originated. Well, it's not locally originated because we have next hop addresses here in the next hop field. So criteria three is, again, a push, it's, it's the same. They're both externally learned. So then we go to the fourth criteria, the AS path. You can see here, we've got AS path 400 and, and, uh, and AS path 900. So an AS path length of one. So again, it's a tie. Then we go to the fifth and final criteria, which is the one we're talking about, which is the origin code. And you can see here, you've got the origin code of I and an origin code of the question mark. So this means it was the network statement. It was learned via IGP. The question mark means that it was redistributed from Autonomous System 400. Redistributed, we'll leave it short there. From Autonomous System 400, but we don't know where AS400 got that information. So therefore, the, mo the more trustworthy origin code is going to be I for IGP. In other words, a network statement on uh, within AS900 generated this advertisement. And so we are going to select that as our valid and best. And so this is going to wrap up the discussion in the BGP best path selection algorithm of the fifth criteria, which is origin code, right, or origin type. And again, the three origin types that you'll see are IGP, you're not, EGP is there, but you're not going to see that, or you should not see that. If you do see that, I would contact uh, somebody in your, on your security team to find out what's going on, um, or uh, incomplete. So again, lowercase i, lowercase e, or the question mark, and lower is better. IGP is zero, EGP, which again, you should never see, is one, value of one, and question mark for incomplete is a value of two. And here we saw that selection process play out. All right, next we're gonna be taking a look at MED, and that may be a series of smaller videos because MED can become highly, highly complex. All right, thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.